right, and welcome once again to Women's Wednesday right here on ACT and The Voice. I am Sheldon Yewell. It's such a pleasure being with you again. It is a really great pleasure to be doing this show again uh, with my very good friend. She's like family now. She's like family. Yes, Dr. Shereen Klu. Doctor, how are you doing? I'm great. And just to let all the members of the public know that at least in the interim, we will be taking your text information. will be shown on the screen. You can send your information and we will reply to your comments and, you know, and of course provide you with the best information that we have. Right? And it has always been the best. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's the best information. Well, yeah. Whatever you say. <laughs> we give the best information. Oh, okay. Right. <laughs> so thank you once again. Um, in our last episode, last show, we spoke about the issues surrounding uh, sex education in schools as well as you know, the various diseases out there. And one of the side effects, now, please hear my words carefully. One of the side effects of introducing something like this in schools without proper planning is pregnancies. Now, pregnancies, being pregnant, is a good thing. When it's unplanned, it can cause some problems. But our topic today mainly about pregnancies and the do's and the don'ts surrounding pregnancies. Many women, again going back to adults, sometimes don't truly understand their bodies. And some, you know, and they make very, you know, critical errors, whether it be diet, how you dress, or what shoes you wear. And this is from first trimester straight down, of course, to delivery. So doctor, first of all, but just to kind of tie things all together from our last show in reference to the side effects, that being pregnancies. A 12 year old, a 13 year old, or even let's say a 14 year old getting pregnant in comparison to someone who let's say is 18, 19, 25, therefore, what are some of the risk factors of a child? Mm -hmm. And here the word I'm using it, because that is what they are, That's what a child is. getting pregnant. I think you just answered your own question there by saying that a child getting pregnant is not just a physical issue, but it's a psychological issue that they have to deal with as well. Because mm. a child carrying a pregnancy means that they don't even understand what, they, what they're up to, what they're up against. Mm -hmm. And um, getting pregnant at that age would have the issue of them not being able to continue schooling, their education, their future, what their aspires and dreams would be. And then the physical aspect would be that they usually would not have their health up to mark. So we have issue with nutrition. Then we have the issues with them with compliance. So coming for antenatal visits, mm. identifying pre-existing problems if they have any at all to identify if they're at risk for any kind of medical problems. And one mm. of the main problems in a young child getting pregnant is preeclampsia pregnancy induced hypertension, which can, which can result in and result a last, a worst case scenario, um, death of mother and child, if it reaches to that point. But if they continue with antenatal care and they know that they have to go to the health centers or to their private doctors for care, then it is possible that we can um, get some of those problems out of the way and have a healthy pregnancy. Mm. At the end of it, delivery, because their pelvis and their pelvic floor that point is not yeah. right, it's not properly mm. uh, developed, then these children are more likely to end up with, if, if a cesarean section is not done and in an appropriate timing, it means that because some children do have normal deliveries if their babies are smaller mm -hmm. and it's been documented however they can end up with complications during delivery and very bad damage down to the pelvic mm -hmm. floor tearing etc but if a doctor in good good sense prevails and they do a cesarean section all of those complications can be avoided but then we have all the risk of a cesarean section involved in healing and a child and anesthetic etc mm. so we have psychological we have physical you know it's amazing and and the analogy that comes to mind is like you're giving a, a man dying of thirst uh, a, a, a droplet of water in a glass and say here drink 
when it comes to just giving condoms in school and say, here, yeah. because we have a dying generation right now of young people involved in all kinds of different activities mm -hmm. looking for answers. And these, let me tell you something. These children are doing it because they won too many times now, because there's different acts of rebellion taking place. But yet you want to give children who are literally dying from the inside of thirst, and I'm saying they're thirsting for knowledge, they're thirsting for love, they're thirsting for all sorts of things, but you're giving them a drop of water in a glass, which is that saying giving condoms in school. Because look at all these issues, yeah. which I am certain are not being taken into consideration when they are introducing these um, phantom measures in schools. So I really want to thank you for that, because part of the argument was to give it in primary schools. No. And, and well, of course, at all age groups in secondary school, I'm like, is that right? You all, that's people making those suggestions, primary as well as, of course, secondary. Oh my goodness! And, and, and a 12 is like form one or form two. That's a child. It's so, a child. Yeah. We're, we're sticking with pregnancies again, and we do with pregnancies across the board. No, 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 thank you for just kind of tying that all in from last week. Now, women come to you with many questions, I'm sure. When it comes to particularly with their first pregnancy and it is something that we cannot ignore because again um, most women um, when they're starting a family they want to have children obviously so it, they're gonna have questions you have no dr. clue has a special list I do <laughs> my wife got that list but warn anybody out there do not play with this woman <laughs> If you're looking to have children and you disobey her rules. <laughs> so let's smile in here. <laughs> Just smile in here. Not when both, it comes to patients. Both, yeah. <laughs> so, from the get go, mm -hmm. you're pregnant. <laughs> what are some of your ground rules? <laughs> Before you get there, Sheldon, Sorry. just to mention, no, that's fine. Just to mention one thing. We have this whole thing with condoms and, and, and handing out condoms mm. at schools. It doesn't protect a child or, or, or adult 100% from pregnancy. Yeah? There is a failure rate. Well, that's so just thing. keep that in mind as well. But even though we're handing out condoms, no, or you want that to give true. condoms, and I feel that condoms should be given out at a different, in a different forum. <clears throat> the first thing we need in schools is psychological help. We have plenty of children out there who need help and they feel that sex is the answer. They need to be talking to people who can help them. Put a Agreed. psychologist in every single school across the country and we will have healthier children. Good point. Having said that, moving on to pregnancy. Yes. So some of the ground rules would be first, preconception. It is always better to plan in anything in life and so be pregnancy as well. Right. Unfortunately, <laughs> the majority of our population do not plan Sorry. pregnancy. <laughs> so we have to go with the flow. Oh so not having a planned pregnancy being a common issue is something we have to deal with. But mm. if we do have to plan, and we do have those few people who would say, I'm planning a pregnancy, doc, I'm, I've come in for a visit, and it's always good to have a visit with your doctor before. Mm -hmm you look for any existing pre-medical conditions they may have, you take a proper history. Mm -hmm. If they're diabetic, you treat your diabetes. diabetes. If they're hypertensive, you treat your, your hypertension. If they're high risk, you advise them whether it's safe to do so or not. If they have heart disease or cardiovascular disease, well then you deal with that in joint management with the cardiologist or internal medicine let's specialist. Let's just stick up in just, just, just as a sidebar. Sure. Mm -hmm. um, not that I use me to bar, but sidebar. Um, <laughs> You mentioned high risk. Just give, I mean, I know there are many, but if you mm -hmm. say the top three um, incidents that's a, that can be considered high risk, what would they be? And those are the ones. Oh, what you mentioned? No. Oh, okay, I thought I was of that. Okay. No, right. okay. those are the common ones we see diabetes, okay. mm. hypertension, mm. high blood pressure, pre existing problems, um, cardiac, cardiac disease okay. or heart disease. Right. And then they have a lot of thyroid problems as well. So we look for any pre-existing problems a patient may have before. Right. Of course, we have a lot of patients with polycystic ovaries. Oh boy, listen. That's a whole topic. You know, you, 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 you know <laughs> once you start, let me tell you something, yeah? To all the ACTN viewers, I had, this, I had to stick this in. When yes. we first started all this well, program yes. years ago, <laughs> and we, I, it's not a mistake, but we decided to open that Pandora's box about polycystic ovaries, I tell you, 
the number of women that are suffering with that right now is amazing. Anyhow, PCOS, we'll, we'll do a whole show on that. That's probably yes. more than two shows. So right. now with the time, we might actually have time just to go through the first trimester, right? right? So let's touch on the first trimester, and we probably have to continue next week. And of course, with A comments as well. But let's go with the first trimester. Okay, so a patient comes for. in. Okay, so a patient comes in and yeah. she's pregnant. Mm -hmm. And we catch her, first of all, we want to catch them in the first trimester because we want to do all of the precautionary measures. We want to do an ultrasound scan because we want to make sure that the baby is in the uterine cavity and not in the tube. So we want to rule out a tubal pregnancy. Mm -hmm. We want to make sure we have a nice heartbeat. We want to make sure that they don't have any ovarian cysts. We want to make sure they have no uterine fibroids, so no pre-existing problems. That's mm -hmm. another problem we have in this society, uterine fibroids. Okay. So what we do is, uh, or what I do, and then I should tell you, mm -hmm. is advise on diet. What will, so what will with regard to diet, there's a sheet I would normally give out, which you probably still have, Sheldon, that I would start. advise you <laughs> regarding what to eat and what not to eat, mm. all the myths that would be taking place that you, you need to ignore. Everybody in this country, I always tell my patients, seem to be a doctor without a degree. <laughs> so you don't listen to other people. You don't so listen sure to... Please get, see? So Mo, go ahead. It's a serious we have thing. A, we, have a, we have a second half story, so it's yeah, we'll continue. It's a serious so business. Mm. So as I would say, and this is how I speak to my patients, you don't listen to Tanti and Bauji and all of them because uh, their information may not be as accurate as the new medical information. Oh, yeah, oh you disregard Tanti. Anyhow, listen, We're not disregarding oh, Tanti, oh, okay. but you write down Tanti oh, problems Lord, and you come to oh, the Jesus. office with it. So we can then discuss Tanti problems. Uh, uh, all right, doctor, right? we'll be taking Could. a little break. Oh, God, <laughs> Jesus Christ. We'll be starting, but anyway. <laughs> Say a prayer. Let's take a break when we come back. We'll continue with the first trimester <laughs> on the second episode of Women's Wednesday. Lord help us. 2007, Win TV in Baton having a show entitled Medical Matters, and I had the privilege of being the host. One of the things I wanted to implement in the show was a space for women and women healthcare. I believe what it was a window that needed to be opened at the time to breathe some fresh air into how we address the issues surrounding women and their health. So, well, the search was on at that point to find the right person, that being of course a gynecologist, to you know, walk on this journey with me. And well, as they would say, as faith would have it, I was introduced to the good doctor, Dr. Shereen Kalu. Since I've been doing this show with the Sheldon, I'm amazed and impressed at the amount of people, both men and women, that we've been able to reach out to, to get medical help and to be able to reach their other health issues. We look forward to helping others in the future. And we are back on a new station and a new time. Yes, it's ACTM The Voice. And this is Cloud 9 with, of course, your story. And this segment is entitled Women's Wednesday. And of course, you know who's going to be joining me, the good doctor. Are you excited to be back on it? I am so excited, yes. Nice, I am. nice, nice, nice. So therefore, you ready? You ready, right? I am you so sure? ready. Sure ready. I'm ready. Ready. Uh, are you ready? Ready. Which one? Red or yellow? Red, which one? Red and ready, or yellow and ready, or oh, oh. all right, then good. Yes. Cool. Red and yellow, we can blend the colors. <laughs> yes. Talking about. Go to secondary colors. Uh, uh, yes. Okay. Yeah. Oh, red okay. And yellow. Yeah. Red and yellow. Red. Oh, yeah. Yeah. orange. Like different heights. All oh, like the colors. Orange. Ah. There we go. Women's Wednesday. <laughs> Welcome back to Auntie and Bouj. I mean, sorry, welcome back to <laughs> see what I'm saying. Blame <laughs> <laughs> shit. Okay, then. All the Tanties out there, but we didn't mean it, alright? No. You all give good advice. <laughs> welcome back to Women's Wednesday. We now start just the second episode, we don't have no behavior. Alright, 
So we're discussing pregnancies, and um, it's a broad topic, so I'm sure we might have to continue even or wrap it up probably next year, see how it goes. Um, but we were talking about the first trimester and some of the, the do's and don'ts, and you were on diets till I believe, right? We were talking about diets, yes. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. We could, well, let, let's just go with the general things. Then, sure, so no problem. Cover everything. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. I would normally go, don't cross your legs in pregnancy. Mm -hmm. Why? The question is why. Because in pregnancy, you tend to form clots in your legs more likely than if you're not pregnant. Mm -hmm. So crossing your legs makes you at risk of forming clots. It's something called deep vein thrombosis, right. which releases into pulmonary embolism. Mm -hmm. So we would advise patients to get into the habit from early to not cross the legs. And pulmonary embolism, for those who don't know, they just, they just that's where the clot releases into the lungs and can obstruct and, and it can that kill. can cause wow. So you, so let to put it in the yeah. To, put it, 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 uh, to put it mildly, well, it's not a mild point, but by crossing your legs during pregnancy, you could actually cause death. Yes. It's very rare, but it's something that it's real. And we're wow. looking at prevention. As mm -hmm. we always say in the programs, it's prevention is better than cure. Right. So this is preventative medicine. So don't cross your legs. Don't lift anything heavy. Mm -hmm. And that could include uh, children as well, because you tend right. to bend and strain to pick up. What I would tell patients to do if they have little children is let them climb up on a on a bed and you take them and you, from and you there. Hold it so. Yeah, or someone can hand you. But your even child. if even if you pick them up from the bed, once it's so the AC has more so straining. Okay, muscles, understood. Exactly. All right. You don't bend over. If you have to bend, you bend your knees and squat, mm -hmm. and you don't wear heels that are more than two inches high. Well, boy. Right. Yeah, no, listen. Lord, don't listen. My wife. No, she listened there. Eh? Well, that was a painful lesson, isn't it? <laughs> because she loved heels. If she was here now, she faced that screw up. Tell me. <laughs> so, for all the women out there, let's run over the points quickly. Don't cross your legs during pregnancy; <laughs> you could actually die. Mm -hmm. Secondly, what do you next point? Let's raise again. Don't cross your legs. Don't lift anything. Don't lift heavy, anything don't heavy. Bend don't bend over. You squat when you're bending, and, and don't, and wear, don't heels. wear heels because um, you would not die because of heels. But Dr. No, Kulu will kill you. No, I wouldn't. She would kill you. <laughs> I wouldn't. I would, Continue. I would. <laughs> Go ahead. Okay. Inhalation of fumes like hair dyes and chemicals, paint, insecticides, household cleaners, ammonias, bleaches, bathroom cleaners, etc. Mm. It's not permitted for inhalation because that is responsible for miscarriages as well. No. So where, where the patient works is important, the workplace, because they may be in an environment that has chemicals, so they need to get out of that environment and find a place where they don't inhale the fumes. Right, okay. So that's important as well. Okay. Um, eating shark and tuna is not permitted in pregnancy because it has high levels of mercury. So we advise you not to have a shark or tuna. All the other fish is fine but not the shark, not the tuna. And in fact, the salmon and the sardine is high in omega-3, which is helpful for the development of the brain of the baby. Question. Um, you can buy sardines, um, those that are fresh within the, the actual package in the packs, yes, plastic, you can. or there's any tin. Yes. Would you advise that they stay away from any tin, or it's OK, well, the sardines of, that is? Because of the preservatives and all of them, we tell you not to have those things. Any Even tin, okay. All, all, the, all the things in the So if you're buying salmon and, and sardine, buy it fresh. You should buy it okay, fresh. Fair enough. Even with the other meats like uh, pepperoni <laughs> and those um, types of meats, they have nitrites in it, so we tell you to stay away from those as well, as much as you can. Even adults, because they're now finding carcinogens in those things, bacon and those things like that. Mm -hmm. um, so that would be for the shark and tuna. Um, no alcohol, no cigarette, no medication, of course, without mm. consultation with your doctor first to find out what medication you can use. Of course, no illegal medication or drugs like um, marijuana, weed, etc. Right. Mm. And also, no caffeine products. So, coffee, green tea, a lot of patients don't know Lucasade that has a caffeine in it as well. Um, chocolates. Yes, people look at me like, well, oh, you just took away my life when I... No, I've heard that. it before. Yes. And I just look away because I just, I, I just hear and then the, the, the screams coming through the TV now. So I just trying to avoid the sound waves, <laughs> you know what I mean? Because you want to tell a pregnant woman, don't <laughs> eat chocolates. Well, at least in the first trimester, and also right. Coca-Cola because of the caffeine products yeah, and yeah. the mm -hmm. black soft drinks. So those are the main things that I will tell my patients. And this is general. That. And this is general right. in 
all pregnancies this is what you do okay vitamin wise and supplements are important mm -hmm. so we use a folic acid we use a multivitamin which is a prenatal vitamin and there are many brands on the market that you can get right. and we use the omega-3 in, <coughs> in the first trimester mm -hmm. because patients may feel nauseous or upset gravel is absolutely safe for them to use and also it's recommended to have small quantities of a meal regularly if okay. you have small quantities regularly you're more you're less likely to feel sick and upset and vomity okay. and also ginger products have been shown to be helpful yeah. nowadays with internet of course people google everything so they find information and they come with information which yeah, is but you still consult your doctor because any hack and quack and mac going up and you know putting information there so i support it too yeah. but please take it and verify with someone who is in the field All right yeah. and that's why we say when you have your questions you either call if it's urgent or your message or you write them down so when you come for your follow-up visits which mm -hmm. are usually antenatal visits once a month for the first uh, um until 28 weeks and then every two weeks until 36 weeks and then every week until you have delivery that's how the antenatal care goes unless you have some medical problem otherwise right wow and we actually capsulated that for you yes we did <laughs> right good so we dealt with the general terms i'm not sure how much time has a few minutes again for, uh, for the well, four or five minutes again good good so let's see in the five minutes how much we can touch on the first trimester because i always say and i think that i mean for those who know that is the of course the most well i like to look at it as the most critical um of the three because this is the beginning the early stages the slightest miss and that's it um so in the first trimester what are some of the key points women should look out for in terms of do's and don'ts okay, that's the so first trimester before we we go there there are two more things sure. that are important now in pregnancy that we would be talking about to patients okay one would be because of the zika virus oh, and the yeah, transmission right. of the zika virus via the mosquito and sexual contact wow, wow, wow. it's now advising yeah, that's true. Mm -hmm. yeah the advice is that patients need to be careful of be well of course the usual advice Being regarding bitten. mosquito bites making sure that your environment is clean and at one point in time you had stated that this one the zika virus was was you know um, a, a big scare since so last year. You actually advising your patients if they can try and not get pregnant. Correct. Right? At that point in time when mm. it was rampant. Now mm. the new studies have been showing that if you have gotten the Zika virus mm. already, then you're immune for life. So you would not get Zika again. Okay, so, so most likely the general population would already be immune because it started around this yeah, time it went, last it was year. Bad. It was bad, yeah. Right, yeah. when it was really bad and people were getting pregnant. So it's not really such an issue. But I'm still warning patients, you can use your repellents that has DEET concentrate in it, which is safe DEET. in pregnancy. Okay. D-E-E-T, yes, mm -hmm. DEET. Which... Um, and make sure that your environment is protected from mosquito bites. So you use your nets, your air condition, your environment generally, as the Minister of Health would have said, to clean up your environment because you are responsible for your own, which I agree with. But other than that, you need to um, also avoid sexual intercourse because if your partner gets a Zika and you're unaware because 80% of patients do not have any signs or symptoms of Zika virus and they may have it, Mm. And we do not have any tests to check for it to see if they have it or not because right. they're still limiting the tests to patients who have the full-blown symptoms mm. in pregnancy. It means that if you have intercourse with your partner and she's already pregnant, the virus can now transmit to her and it can affect your developing fetus. So it's either you have sex with condoms or at this point in time, mm. which is kind of jokey when you talk about it, <laughs> But um, yes, it is for you know, the married safe. couple. And stuff, yeah. <laughs> it's uh, she's already pregnant, but it's safer. Understood. Um, or you just stay away from sexual intercourse. The female, if she has had Zika virus infection, mm. she has the the sim the manifestation of the virus that can affect her fetus for two months. Mm. So if she knows she has it for two months, she should stay away before planning a pregnancy right. and with a man it's six months and that's important I think for people to know because that was new information that had come about right. so that would be the two things that we're looking out for in addition to other things 
other than that, what we're looking for in the first trimester in pregnancy, one of the big problems that we will tell our patients to make sure they um, would inform the doctor is any bleeding or spotting in pregnancy and discharging. Mm -hmm. So if it is that a patient has a spotting or brown discharge uh, or bright red bleeding, then she needs to be alarmed. It's not something it's a, that you just sit, yeah. Yeah, you don't mm -hmm. sit on. Especially if you have a combination of that with pain and you've missed a period, you know you're pregnant, mm. then an ectopic or tubal pregnancy needs to be ruled out. Wow. So that's one. Mm -hmm. If you're just bleeding without pain and you have already established that you are pregnant but it's in the right place and it's not tubal, then we're looking at a threatened miscarriage or threatening to miscarry your pregnancy. And 50% of cases of patients who have that are usually because they have some form of developmental abnormality and it's God's way of making you have a miscarriage naturally as opposed to carrying through a pregnancy yeah, yeah, yeah. with an abnormal child. Mm -hmm. So please don't blame yourselves that you've done anything wrong. If you have visited your doctor and you follow your instructions all right things, yeah. and you're doing what you're supposed to be doing, mm -hmm. don't blame yourselves because some things in life we just can't change. Mm -hmm. What has to be will be. But that's something that you need to visit your doctor for because it may not be anything at all. It may just be a uh, local little spotting that may be coming from sometimes from the back and from hemorrhoids and you okay. kind of get confused and you think it's coming from the vagina. Mm. So these are some of the things um, that you look out for. And if you do see bleeding, you go to your doctor. You visit, you check, get a checkup and you find out what's happening. In terms of tubal pregnancy, uh, I'm, I'm seeing we're going to have to continue this next week. Tubal pregnancy and ectopic, um, um, what are the, I mean, I, I believe in tubal, um, can, the can the child survive? I don't... There's no survival with tubal or ectopic, ectopic pregnancy at all. Okay, yeah. all right. With regard to tubal pregnancy or an ectopic, it's the same thing. Mm -hmm. Ectopic is majority tubal, but it can occur in the abdomen as well. It can occur in the cervix, it mm -hmm. can occur in the ovary. But the majority of them are in the tube. That's why we call it tubal, tubal yeah. but it's really mm -hmm. ectopic. And um, they don't survive. Okay. Abdominals, there are a couple of cases that have well, been known oh, to survive. That, okay, that was yeah, the abdominal okay, ones. Good, right. um, but it's a very unsafe pregnancy to carry through. So you would advise if that's the case that you... It is recommended once it's identified that it's terminated. terminated. Because okay. the mother's life is at risk. Because the pregnancy implants in the bowel and the bowel supply and then a pregnancy carrying through yeah, that yeah, is yeah, yeah. a dangerous Once that gets in the bloodstream, that's it. Yeah. Well, that, that it, it blocks the bowel mm. and then it obstructs and then to deliver the baby is another problem because the placenta could implant. Mm. I remember there was a case in San Fernando where the placenta actually implanted on the air water, which is mm. a big blood supply that comes from the heart. And if a placenta implants there, it's Im almost impossible to separate that placenta wow. because that patient can hemorrhage and die. Mm. So what they do is they take part of it out and then they give drugs to try and disintegrate the rest of the placenta that's there. So it's a dangerous yeah. pregnancy to take through. And mm. if identified, sh it should be recommended to terminate the pregnancy. Dr. Kalu, wow. Um, but with yeah, regards, we, well, we, sorry, Charlotte, no, with, <laughs> with regards to what is happening now mm. in terms of carnival and uh, promiscuity and mm. pr unprotected sex, we do see a rise in preg unwanted pregnancy, miscarriages, abortions, and uh, tubal pregnancies. Wow. Dr. Kalu, we, yeah. See why we had to come back on television. <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, again, you know, we've been on this road before, and it seems as though, like, wow, is this is really refreshing just to hear it again. I'm sure it's refreshing for the public to hear it again. So I want to thank you, of course, for joining us again on this journey. Dr. Clue, thank you so very much. Very right? And, um, you know, we're going to continue, of course, every week right here on ACTN on every Wednesday, Women's Wednesday, as we educate you, the public, not just the women, but the men as well, about women's health because what impacts women also impacts us. So thank you so very much. God's blessings to you, to you, to you, to the birdies. The yes. pool. Take a Second week and I still, I still have reach it. <laughs> I really <laughs> Have a wonderful, wonderful day. God bless. <laughs>